The tariff dispute rattling markets and reportedly Republican lawmakers. A headline from The Hill reads, Trump pulls out rug from GOP on trade. So let's bring in Republican Senator from Florida, Marco Rubio, who sits on the Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, we'll try to get to a lot of foreign policy tonight. Great to have yeah, you. Thank you. Um, let's start there. Bloomberg has this to say about the ongoing trade dispute with China. Uh, it says, uh, President Donald Trump's threat to impose massive new tariffs on China Friday has fractured Senate Republicans, with many hoping it's just a negotiating ploy, some cheering him on and others opposed to his tariff man strategy altogether. Senator, where are you? Well, I, I understand why people in states and industries, I have them in Florida, that are hurt by some of these things in the short term. But you know what really hurts our industries? The cheating and stealing of the Chinese. The fact that they are able to do whatever they want in our economy, but they deny access from our companies to their economy, the unfair terms upon which we trade with them. So either we confront this now or we won't have any industries to be worried about five or ten years from now when they've put us out of business because of unfair competition. This is the first administration ever, and certainly in modern history, that's actually taken these guys on. And the Chinese in the past have used a very simple strategy. They know how desperate we are for a deal. They know how powerful these corporate CEOs coming up to Washington and marching over here and telling us how devastating this is going to be. And they get us to back down. And then, and then what they do is they change their mind and change the terms of any agreement. They back away from agreements they've made. I'm glad the president has stood up to them. We want to deal with China. It has to be fair. I'd rather not have a deal than to have a bad deal. And I'm glad the president seems to feel the same way. What do you make of the criticism of those who say there are massive human rights abuses going on in China, referenced in the last few days to, quote, concentration camps? Uh, a million, maybe more, uh, Muslim Uyghurs, who are the minority, of course, in China, uh, being put in these camps. China says uh, people are happy to be there. It's a vocational kind of thing. Um, but some critics saying, listen, the Trump administration should not miss this opportunity to put human rights abuses on the table while negotiating with China. What do you say? Well, I think it has to be part of the broader conversation with China. I think you can negotiate. You know, they're the second largest economy in the world. They're the most populous nation in the world. They have nuclear weapons. We have to deal with them. That doesn't mean you don't raise the issue of human rights. I will tell you that in the United States Senate, no one has spoken out more about the issue of the Uyghurs in the Xinjiang province and the concentration camps are being these, these camps that they're being held in. No one's spoken about these things more than I have. And I do think we need to continue to raise it. For example, I've asked the administration to issue global Magnitsky sanctions against the government officials responsible for running these camps and for governing the region where these camps exist. And at the same time, I think we have to have a trade and a geopolitical arrangement with the Chinese that's balanced and fair and good for America in the long term, not one that allows them to continue on their plan to supplant us and, and overtake us and become the world's most powerful country. Uh, Senator, you've spent a lot of time on the issues ongoing in Venezuela as well. You've talked to the man the U.S. is recognizing as the interim president, Juan Guaido. Are you worried that there is a window of opportunity that is closing to make a change there? No, I remind everybody that this is a peaceful movement of civil disobedience. Juan Guaido doesn't have an army. He doesn't have weapons. He can't put anybody in jail. He doesn't threaten his political opponents. And peaceful movements of civil disobedience don't win any of the battles. They only win the last one. And Maduro has to go undefeated. He can't afford to lose a single one of these battles. He's playing defense all day long. He's insecure. He's got people he knows now for a fact within the inner circle of his own regime that have looked for a way out, have looked for an exit strategy away from him, have looked to get him out of power. Today, he ordered his uh, security forces to take over the three private airports. That's a message to those insiders that if you come after me and you fail, you won't be able to leave the country. So he, he, every single day he faces threats to his rule, and at any moment, Moment that could break. I'm not, look, getting rid of Maduro is important, but what's really important is getting rid of this, this system, this corrupt, evil system that violates human rights, that has canceled out all efforts uh, to, con to impose constitutional order in that country. And, um, and that's the important part here is to return to democracy. I want to quickly ask you about Iran as well. Uh, one of your colleagues on the Democratic side of the aisle there in the Senate, Senator Tim Kaine, says this. He says, I'm deeply worried that the Trump administration is leading us toward an unnecessary war with Iran. Trump's White House has taken a series of actions to increase tensions, including misrepresenting the regular deployment of the USS Abraham Lincoln as a warning to Iran. Senator. I don't agree with that statement. The, the threats emanating are clear. I'm aware of them. The intelligence justifies it. Here, here's what I would say to you. If, God forbid, tonight or tomorrow or in the days to come, American forces in this region come under attack by Shia militias, that will be at the direction of Iran. 
If American forces or American shipping or naval vessels come under attack by the Houthis in Yemen, those are agents of Iran. And if we are not postured, if we don't have sufficient force in the region to deter that or to defend ourselves, and Americans die as a result, then everyone's going to be in front of these TV cameras asking why the president didn't do more based on the intelligence to prepare our men and women in uniform. And so I'm glad he's doing what he's doing. It is appropriate. It is 100 percent justified. And just once, just for once, I wish people wouldn't view everything through the lens of politics and understand this is a president that's trying to get us out of the Middle East. I don't always agree with him on that, but he's trying to get us out of the Middle East. Do you think he would inject us back into the Middle East with more military force unless it was justified? They're doing the right thing. I'm glad they're doing it. And every American should be glad they're doing it because those are our men and women in uniform who deserve to be protected. Senator Marco Rubio, Florida. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Great to have Thank you. you. Thank you.